I am Allison McKay. I'm the chair of the Civil Environmental and Geodetic Engineering Department here at Ohio State. So rainwater is probably the place to start to think about water that we have available to us and it falls on the land surface and most of that is going to run off into rivers and streams and depending upon where you live you may have a very large stream like the Ohio River. So surprisingly each of us uses about 160 gallons of water per day. So if you think of the increasing size of a municipality that is supplying water to their users that can grow to be quite a large number quite quickly as cities get big in their size. And in the United States right now, most people do receive their water from some centrally located municipal treatment system. And then we use our water for lots of different purposes. We cook with it, we bathe with it, uh, we run restaurants and we do manufacturing with that water. And that's gonna add contaminants to it that we maybe don't wanna have back in our natural systems. So we send that water then to a treatment plant, take all of those contaminants out, and then put the water back into the environment. And so oftentimes there's always somebody who's living downstream of other users of that water. So we have to be mindful to ensure that we're maintaining its quality. Uh, over the last, I don't know, decade or so, maybe a little bit longer than that, there have been large growths of algae, particularly in the western end of Lake Erie, and that's linked to nutrient management, that there's too much from all the agricultural activities in Indiana and Ohio and Michigan, that when it rains, some of those nutrients get carried off into the lake and they cause a lot of algae to grow. And scientists don't understand exactly why, but there's some species of algae that as they start growing in the summertime, they release toxins out into the water that can affect people's livers, that can affect your skin if you come in contact. And so in 2014, the levels of those toxins had gotten above the amount that was permissible to be able to drink a couple of liters of water a day or to be able to shower in the water. And the city of Toledo had to shut down their water supply until the levels of toxin had abated. So certainly um, thinking about uh, you know, looking around your household to make sure you don't have dripping taps uh, and whatnot is important. But I think in this context of sort of hiddenness, we talked about the water supply system, but in our everyday lives, there's water that's hidden that we're using. The water that goes to grow our food, the water that makes the denim, or the cotton that's in our denim jeans. Uh, if you include that in a person's water footprint, the usage there is at least an order of magnitude larger than what you have in the tap of your house. Um, so I, I think although we can pay attention and be more aware that this hidden water supply and treatment system in our urban areas exists, we need to be mindful that there's a lot of other ways that water is used to support the quality of life that we have.